Hi guys, like that. <laughs> <laughs> like a blue steel kind of thing. We're back in the plush suspension workshop and today we're gonna to do another strip down video um, on a shock that maybe some of you are familiar with and it is a RockShox Brain Shock. Now, you find these on specialized bikes and it's got this very clever extra bit in it that uh, is basically like an auto lockout. I've actually never serviced one of these and that's why we've got Daz with us today, Hello. who is our resident brain surgeon. I like that. Hey. I like that. <laughs> and Daz is gonna run me through exactly how to take these apart. We are actually the specialized UK suspension service center. So if you've got a specialized bike and you've got specific specialized suspension, that's a mouthful. It is. <laughs> uh, on your bike, then you can send it to us and we are the official service center for, for specialized. So let's get into it. Perfect. So the first thing we were going to do is we need to clean it, get all this dirt and this mud and grime off of it. I'm going to wash this man right out of my hair. Once that's done, we will start the strip down. Uh, first things first, we'll take all the settings so that we know what the customer settings are. Cool. Uh, and then we'll start the strip down. Did you see when I blew one up? That was uh, the ramp chamber one, wasn't it? You forgot to let the ramp chamber out. Yeah, and, right. took, and took the piston off the top. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. And the, the little thing yeah. just went pew. Yeah. Well, let's take it all apart. Yeah. And start the build laps. And we'll come back to you when it's all laid out and we can show you what's in there. So we've just taken the air can off now and Daz actually just explained this is a good point to point out that you can actually hear that this shock needs a service. I don't know if you can hear that. That is your shock screaming out to you that you need a service. So this one obviously needs some attention, which we're doing right now. The bladder out, which is this part here, the part that applies all the pressure to the fluid. And we'll, we'll go through this in a bit, but Daz has just said, can you add it to my collection? Which I'm going to do now. And here is his collection, all the way along here. All the way along here, all the way along here, all the way behind his computer. That's how many of these shocks he's done, which is actually quite insane. Have you counted them? No, that's that's only since we moved to this barn as well. When we was in the other barn, I'd probably done about the same amount done as more. that. Wow, you really are brain man. <laughs> So, shock is now apart, we stripped it down. Daz helped quite a lot more than I thought he would have to. There's quite a few bits to go through here and some unique technologies which are really quite interesting. Air can, piston, piston shaft, O-rings, eyelet, adjusters, all that kind of stuff. So, I guess let's go through it. And now it's apart, we can actually show you in detail what, what all these bits do. So I guess let's start with the air can. That's where the air is. <laughs> yeah, so a common fe a feature on this air can that Specialized use is they use the auto sag. So that's this bit here. So uh, ideally what they recommend you do is put 300 PSI in your shock and then sit on your bike, press the auto sag button and that should set your sag up to around 15%. From experience, it doesn't really work that easy. Uh, it's always best to double check by doing it the standard way of fitting sag and putting sag on, um, but it's not too bad. It's, it's a bit different. Uh, we've got the, the outer seal, so that's the seal that you will all see on your shocks, this little dust seal, basically, just a scraper seal to scrape all the, all the stuff off of your uh, shock shaft. And then we've got this seal here, which is called a quad ring. And if you can see, they've got two high points with a little low point in the middle. And that just doubles the amount of contact patch that there is for the, for the seal 
Um, it has the same on the inside as well. Uh, and most high pressure seals or dynamic seals that actually move around will be now quad rings, not O-rings. Cool, that's the air can. Then I guess onto the main event, which is the damper, which is all of this part here. So most of this is, is all damper parts. This all houses the damping fluid and the technologies that, that restrict the flow of fluid through the compression of the shock or the rebound stroke of the shock. And we can actually show you now all these little different bits and what they do. And with this RockShox SID brain shock, this is right at the limit of what you can get away with in a lightweight package. The amount of damper fluid that these shocks actually use is tiny, isn't it? All of this stuff is really, really small, really tiny, super lightweight, and actually a lot smaller than, than in other shocks on the market. So uh, we'll have a little look at that now. Here is our damper shaft and seal head. And this is the, the shaft that goes up and down as you get bumps on the bike. Now the piston is here and we've actually got that off the bike at the moment. And again, you can see all the piston architecture there for rebound, and then the other side for compression. And then that is then fine-tuned by the shims, which are all here. They all work again like a leaf spring. If you watched our TTX, our owner's TTX video, it's a good explanation in there of how the shims work like a leaf spring. All of that is pretty standard stuff when it comes to suspension, yeah. really and you've got your piston moving up and down in the, uh, in the damper shaft, in the uh, damper tube here. And that fluid gets pushed up here and the pressure moves all the way up this hose into this unit here, which is the brain, the brain unit, the brain shock. And we've actually got one of these compression units apart here um, in the full service, controlled by a blue knob. And this knob basically, or adjuster, this adjusts how much fluid can flow into this assembly. They call it a brain, it's not electronic or anything like that. It is a brass mass. This chunk of brass is pretty heavy. Comparison to it. For the size yeah, of it. The components in the shock, yeah. Um, and what this does is this opens and shuts a valve. So it stops the flow of fluid through the entire system, essentially locking the system. Um, and I don't know if you want to explain how it works, Daz. It's like this with the outside cover. Um, all of this is suspended in fluid and then this is actually placed on the axle, the rear axle on the bike. Um, so it's closest to any movement at all with the back end. Once the back end feels a bump, this moves out the way and allows fluid to pass through these ports up inside here. So the very, very light spring on there, light gauged spring, um, and then the actual brass mass itself with the ports that it's covering. So you can have it soft, which will basically be completely open. It will bounce like a normal suspension unit. Uh, the difference is that when you run this firm, it will be firm until it finds a bump or, or has a reaction, and that's when the, the brass, brass mass will move out of the way and allow fluid to come through the ports. I think feel-wise, it's not for everyone, is it? No, so there is, there's a bit of a jolt in between it being locked out and it opening. Um, you can feel that jolt, which is what a lot of people don't really get on with, but it's efficiency over feeling, or yeah. efficiency over comfort. That's it, pretty much, in that shock. So let's get it back together, and then we can get it on the dyno and actually show you the brain shock working. So these are our bleed machines. These are Olin's branded ones, but they are Andriani machines. Um, they're vacuum machines, so they actually vacuum all the air out of, and all the old oil out of the shock. And then they're filling machines as well, so they fill the shock with oil at high pressure. I thought I'd just chuck this one on for you and we'll get it bled. So, shock's in our shock squasher. We've got a little adapter for these. And what I can do now is check the function of the shock. I can apply some pressure to it just to see if it's working. But the main thing I can do is check the function of the brain. So with this on firm, which it is now, it's got a decent lockout. But you'll see if I shake the shock, I'll be able to get this to 
move. And that's essentially what it's doing. So when you get an impact like this, it opens the shock up. So I've got a, a, a load on the shock there. And when I shake the shock, <laughs> it opens like that. Yeah, and then if you put it onto soft, it will work as a Less. traditional traditional suspension unit. That yeah, there you has... go, look. So that goes up and down. Nice and easy, put that on firm. That's now not nice and easy, but it does when I get an impact like that. Isn't that clever? Amazing. It's they are cool. Still, still amazes me. Shocks, really. We're done. Shocks back together, functioning perfectly, serviced, new O rings, new fluid, working nicely for the customer. So let's go pop that back on the bike and uh, we're done. Okay. Um. <laughs>